Greetings of the day everyone. I am privileged to welcome you all into the first children edition of Orange City Literature Festival organized by SGR Knowledge Foundation in association with GH Raisoni University powered by Raisoni groups of institutions. The motive behind the fest is to explore the ways that should help students develop emotional intelligence. There is no one way to raise a child. Each child is unique and can vary in so many ways in abilities and behaviors from others in the group. Ram Gopal Vallad, better known by his pen name Ram Ji Vallad, indebted to his own parents for an upbringing that has helped him overcome great challenges and difficulties, set out to meet numerous parents to work out some common guidelines that could help groom a child. In this hour of the day, we are going to learn some points from Sir for the session Active Parenting – How to Raise Children with Boundless Potential. But before we start, let me introduce Sir. Ramji Vallad is an IITN, a tech company co-founder, a much sought after motivational speaker and the author of the humorous science fiction for children, Oops, the Mighty Gurgle and the best-selling autobiography from Ouch to Oops. He has recently written his third bestseller, Active Parenting. He has inspired over 50,000 children with his talks and his life stories in a chapter in one of the eight class textbooks in, of CBSE students. So without wasting a moment, I wish to hand over the session to you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Uraida. Uh, thanks for the introduction. So I also introduce myself usually with one sentence, which is, I'm Ramji Vallath and I'm the happiest and most positive individual I have met in my life. So, uh, so I, you know, why did I get into active parenting? That's a fairly uh, longer story. So I would spend actually the first 10 minutes or so introducing what is the reason why I got into this. But first of all, uh, the important thing is to remember that the over the last uh, one year I have actually had about 25, 30 webinars with parents and parenting sessions. And across the board, there are certain issues which parents are facing, certain challenges with their parenting. And uh, the good thing is that active parenting actually addresses all these issues from the basics. So, for example, one of the major issues today that parents face is screen addiction of children. And uh, children, kids are completely addicted to the mobile phones or if the mobile phone is not there, then it's a tablet or it's a TV screen. And unfortunately, parents cannot do too much to control the use of some of these, um, some of these screens because for the last two years, they have been really glued to it because that is what is required because most of the classes were online and the children were glued to it. And then while they are sitting in a classroom, online classroom, then they also get into uh, their chats and whatever. Uh, and actually kids as young as one year old, two year old are now getting addicted to screens because parents use that as a way of feeding the child. And then the child gets addicted to it and they start screaming when parents take them away and parents don't know when to draw the line. There are a lot of other issues which are affiliated to this, one is that lack of concentration, lack of ability to focus. So there are a series of issues which parents face sort of related to each other. Now, the one thing that parents can do is to put their foot down and, and shout at the child and use brute force, which parents can actually do because the power equation is like that, and then force something down the child's throat. The other, is, other way of doing addressing the same problem is to build certain qualities in children from day one, which will ensure that children manage their own lives and manage their own lives in a way that is um, towards the kind of goal that they have. Uh, they are driven by their purpose. And that is the second way of handling it. Obviously, the second way is a much better way of handling it. And active parenting actually addresses that. So before I get into active parenting again, just a quick introduction about myself. And uh, let me, I will have to sort of share my 
power point here. So the idea of active parenting is to bring up children who are happy, responsible, and successful. Happiness is something that we all run after in our lives, whether we are spending time with our children, or whether we are going on a vacation, we are staying in a five-star hotel, or we are going on a you know, long trek, or we are doing marathon races, or eating in a great restaurant, having luxuries of life, whatever we do, or you know, running after a great career and then moving up the corporate ladder, <clears throat> whatever we do is ultimately thinking that we will find happiness at the end of this entire thing. I'm going to turn it around a bit and say that happiness is the aim of every moment of our lives. So the important thing is to bring up a child who is joyous, happy, under whatever circumstances they go through, and also able to pass on happiness and support to others around them. <clears throat> that is the ultimate adult that we would like to, to actually bring up. And we also want the children to be responsible for taking responsibility for their own lives so that the parents do not have to get into micromanaging every moment of their lives. And the moment they start micromanaging their lives, then it leads to stress because children have different ideas about their lives than parents do. And parents then try to enforce their idea of what the child has to be, which leads to dissonance, uh, stress, emotional outbursts, and ultimately the breakdown of relationship between parent and child. <clears throat> so the only way really to ensure that children are disciplined is by inculcating self-discipline in children and a sense of purpose. So this is what active parenting is about. And this is the way parents can truly make children successful. The first definition of success is to be happy. The second definition of success is to achieve something which people around them um, appreciate, right? So how do parents go about doing that? And I want to draw upon a lot of learnings that I've had from my own life. So I come from a very humble background, studied in a small village in Kerala, studied in Malayalam medium school, had never spoken a sentence in English till I reached my engineering college. My school, the uniform in the school was white dhoti and white shirt and chapels if you could afford it because most of the people were extremely poor. Pass percentage was 20%. From there, I managed to get into IIT with a rank very close to 100 you know, out of uh, about 3 lakh people who had written the entrance exam that year. After IIT, I did my MBA and I had a career which was absolutely fantastic. Reached a very high level. Uh, I became a chief operating officer in the telecom industry at the age of 34. And then I was stricken down by an autoimmune disorder which went on to cripple me completely. I was completely paralyzed and I had to, um, I had to actually reinvent my life completely after that. So I had to have a lot of medications and this is what I used to look like in those days. I had actually put on 16 kilos of weight. I could barely walk. I used to keep tripping and falling. I would fracture bones. But I managed to find solutions for myself. I found a treatment in the US, went and got my entire body reset, rebooted in some way, killed the entire immune system and restarted it. Uh, so the chemotherapy actually made me lose my hair. But the life, my life actually turned around at that point in time. I decided that I don't want to pursue a corporate career anymore. I want to write books, starting with books for children. So I wrote my first book, Lying in the Hospital Bed in Chicago. And that book got published and it was called Oops, the Mighty Gurgle. It was a very funny children's book. And it became a big hit. I mean, this was, this was written about 10 years back. And uh, that time I was invited to many schools to deliver talks about the book. And I decided that I could actually make children laugh a lot because the characters from the book are so wacky that children would enjoy uh, my sessions. And I've had sessions with 1,000 children in one room and the only sound you could hear is the sound of laughter from the children. And then I went on to write my second book, which is uh, my own life story from Ouched Oops, 
it became a bestseller from day one. Uh, and uh, this is me, you know, talking to children. And over the last uh, eight years, I have delivered maybe 50, 60 talks to children and uh, address maybe about 60,000 children. And the idea was to, number one, make them laugh a lot. Number two is impart life-winning skills to them. Uh, skills which they can use to ensure that they are finally successful in life. And this has been extremely well taken. In fact, uh, I have a lot of kids then who come and befriend me on Facebook and Insta and things like that. Uh, I've also delivered a similar number of talks to corporates where I have delivered um, leadership talks to global leadership teams across the world. So I have managed to completely reinvent my life and uh, and I, in, through this entire journey, I remained positive and happy and looking forward to life. And my life story now has been written in Macmillan's textbook, eighth grade textbook, and it's a chapter which a lot of kids of eighth grade across the country are reading. And I have children who reach out to me to uh, tell me that they got inspired. So it's been a wonderful journey. And this is when I started thinking about how can I really change the world and make the world a better place? How do I support children to become more successful adults? And I realized there's only limited amount of interaction I can have with children. Maybe I, I can deliver a talk. <clears throat> I can deliver some sessions. It is maximum of a few hours. So what I need to do actually, in fact, was to help parents bring up children to be truly successful. And for that, I dedicated a lot of time then in doing a lot of research and identifying the <clears throat> content which is required to, to impart such abilities in children through the parents. So this book called Active Parenting is a result of that. Uh, and uh, it's how to raise children to, be, to have boundless potential. So every child is born with tremendous amount of potential. Parents need to really tap that potential and ensure that children have the best shot at life and only parents can do it so i can just give an example there was a study conducted in the uk starting with 1955 they tracked a set of people who were born in that year all the way till they were old people every 10 years they would um, go back to those people and understand what is happening in their lives and they took a large sample of about 40,000 people in 1955, then another set of people in 1960s, another large set in 1970s, 80s. And each of these cohorts, they call it, they started figuring out, uh, following them up, following up with them and figuring out what their lives are. And the one, the biggest learning that they got from this entire exercise was the single biggest factor for success in life was the kind of parenting that children received. So where the parents actually spent time with children and quality time with children doing certain things, the children became highly successful in life. Where parents were disengaged or passive or did not engage in the right fashion with the children, the children grew up to be unsuccessful. They were in the bottom quartile of the entire cohort. So parenting is the single biggest factor. And there are certain things that parents can do, as I said in the beginning, to build the basics in children, which will eventually make them successful in life. <clears throat> and this is what I have encapsulated in active parenting. Active parenting is the result of about four and a half years of research done by me. And in this journey, I in fact enrolled for a child psychology diploma, learned about a lot of stuff on child psychology, uh, I have done a lot of research into positive psychology, consulted with psychologists, consulted with a lot of parents and understood what the challenges they are facing. And also, I spent time with a lot of people who are very successful in life, like vice chancellors of universities, uh, heads of NGOs, uh, people who are successfully um, started companies, people who have... Uh, uh, who are directors of scientific institutions, uh, corporate leaders, 
government officials try to understand what kind of parenting made them successful and what are the qualities that their parents imparted in them which made them successful <clears throat> and i came up with a few qualities which are required to be inculcated in children for them to become successful so that is the first part of active parenting what are these qualities and why are they important the second <clears throat> the second uh, part of it is a few strategies that parents can use uh, in children to build these qualities the third part of the book is about there are 11 qualities sub qualities which make up these five attributes so what are these sub qualities and how can parents use age appropriate techniques to build that in children starting from actually infancy all the way going up to teenage years so that's the essential part of the book but the first part of it there are three secrets in this book which i have shared it's not truly a secret because it's common sense in some sense but many parents do not appreciate how important these are so these are what the principles of active parenting first principle is that you know, parents of great people build the right qualities proactively early in life now the, the most important word in that is proactively it is not a reactive uh, action to a situation but as a as a practice the parents are aware of these qualities and they try and build these with on their children in their children proactively so the difference between reactive and active parenting is this in reactive parenting it's about typically appeasements so parents uh, sometimes give expensive gifts to children because they want their children to behave in a particular way uh, sometimes because parents are not able to spend time with the children they put them in front of the tv or they give them a mobile phone or a tablet to play with uh, parents do not spend enough time with children so they give them treats outside or chocolates or whatever and try to find appeasement whereas active parenting is about rewarding the right behavior rather than bribing for the right behavior so that's a big difference <clears throat> the second and the rewards in most cases in active parenting is just an appreciation of the child and not actually giving any gifts which are meant to bribe the child the other one is many parents do not know how to draw the line between being too tough on the children and being too lenient on the children so many parents intimidate the child when they are behaving badly they shout at them sometimes they beat them they lock them up they ground them all kinds of stuff whereas active parenting is about engaging with the child as if the child is an adult uh, try and reason with the child understanding that the child is different from the parent and their uh, their motives are different they are in a, their life is in a different era compared to the parents so what motivates them what they understand what they appreciate may be different so parents need to engage with them understand that and then uh, use rational and um, and engaging discussions with the children to motivate them to do the right thing sometimes parents end up pleading with the child and the worst is when parents actually threaten a child to do something saying that i'm going to do this this and then they cannot carry on with uh, carry out the threat fully because it was a it was an unrealistic threat and so they end up finally pleading with the child whereas active parents actually reason with the child logically and try to persuade them so instead of threatening it becomes persuasion instead of punishment it is about prevention of an act and that is when the right qualities are required to be built so that children do not indulge in activities which require punishment so that brings me to the second secret which is <clears throat> every interaction with your child is an opportunity to build the right qualities so the most important aspect is that you need to have interactions number one number two is that even when you are not talking to the child but parents are discussing with themselves uh, or there is some a parent is actually interacting with somebody outside let's say uh, a domestic help or 
somebody who's a vendor to them or somebody who is a friend or a grandparent or a relative, child is always watching them. And hence, it's very important for parents to be cognizant that everything that they do will have an impact on the child. And so, putting up the right behavior, which will role model the right values, is a way to build the right qualities in children. This is something which parents need to be cognizant of all the time. So every opportunity, every interaction is an opportunity to build the right qualities. And there are these qualities which parents need to be aware of and start building it. So this is what I call passive versus active. Passive parenting is not aware that what they do is having an impact on the child. So they do whatever uh, impulse, impulse that comes to their mind. Now, active parents control their impulses and they are aware that their children are watching and then they do the right behavior. So, it's also important to remember that passive parents, typically, they look only for the result. So, I want my child to come first in the class and if the child doesn't come first, I shout at him or I shout at her or I want my child to be the best singer or best sports person in the school. So, if she doesn't come first, then you shout at them and you know, you're not doing a correct job and etc, etc. Whereas, active parents actually engage in the process itself. Now, what is it that I can do to encourage my child and give them a sense of purpose so that they themselves want to achieve? So, rather than the, the purpose, the goal being pushed from the parent side down to the child, active parents, what they do is they make the children want to achieve. And so, they build a sense of purpose in them and hence that's the process itself they engage in. Passive parents are disengaged, they are not really bothered about how the child behaves, whereas active parents are always engaged with the child, they spend time with the child, they observe the child, they internalize what the child is going through and understand it, and they are not judgmental. The worst thing that a parent can be is judgmental with their child. Uh, they should understand that children also make mistakes, they are human beings, they are individuals and they go through their ups and downs in life and most importantly the children are different from the parents. Do not expect whatever motivates you to also motivate your child. They are individuals in their own right. So give them that respect and ensure that you understand what their motives are and then support those motives. Understand what their strengths are and support those strengths. So whereas passive parenting is transactional, so you are actually just focused on that particular transaction with, you know, shouting at the child or even if you are actually encouraging the child, it's only that transaction there they're bothered about. Whereas active parents transform the life of the child by being constantly engaged. And the last secret is that parenting will be stress-free only if children take responsibilities for their own lives. You know, what typically happens is parents do not uh, appreciate this point enough. Some parents know this. Some parents don't even understand this. Even the parents who know it, sometimes do not appreciate the importance of this enough. So, it's always a, either being overprotective or completely letting go. There is, and you need to find the right balance between the two. Or being micromanaging versus totally disengaged. Again, you have to find a, uh, a right balance between the two and ensure that child feels responsible for their own lives. Again, as I said, it's about building a sense of purpose in the child, making them want to achieve so that parents do not have to keep pushing them all the time. So these are the three secrets and uh, pushed versus motivated. The big difference between pushed and motivated is when you're pushing a child, it's using fear and shame. Parents can put fear into the child because Parents are bigger, they, are, they have power equation on their side. So you can say, no, if you don't do this, I'm going to cut out your allowance for the week or I'm not going to let you go out and play with your friends uh, or worse still, I'll, I'm going to thrash you. Uh, whereas sometimes when children do the something which is not correct, then parents shame them saying that you're so uh, useless, I work so hard for you. I'm doing all this and this is how you repay me, etc, etc. 
Whereas that is not required when you build a sense of responsibility in the child itself. And the child is, themselves feel bad when they let down the parents. And all you need to do is make them process that guilt that they feel and process it towards ensuring that they fix themselves. And in pushing, there is also con constant conflict which happens between parent and child. And in the younger age, the more the conflict is, the less the bonding between parent and child when the, they go into tweens and teens. And it's tweens and teens when children really need your guidance as parents because they're, so, they're exposed to so many things, their own YouTube channels, their own Insta, Insta celebrities, uh, their own friends, they, have, they watch so many shows and all of them have an influence on the child. Now to be able to make the child understand the difference between right and wrong, uh, what will help them, what will not help them, it is important that the parents have a great bonding with the child. And that bonding can happen not with constant conflict, but with perfect harmony between parent and child. So the child should look at the parent as a best friend and uh, be able to share anything that they want with the parents, including the mistakes that they make. And the parents then would be able to not be judgmental, but be supportive and help them. You know, when I was in IIT, uh, I got into all kinds of bad habits. I got into drinking, I got into uh, smoking, bunking classes, sitting and playing cards through the night. And my grades, which started at 8.4 as C a grade point average, CGPA, went all the way down to 5. And I, I failed in so many subjects that I was nearly thrown out of IIT. But the thing that really helped me was that my parents were my best friends. So I could go and tell them whatever was happening in my life. And I told them, confessed to them all the issues. And then be, without being judgmental, they sat with me, helped me, encouraged me. And then I managed to graduate from IIT instead of being thrown out because of my parents. So it's so important for parents to be the best friends of your child. You see, you hear about children committing suicide in the 10th grade after board exams, after in 12th grade, or because their peers are maybe shaming them or keeping them away again, uh, out of their groups and things like that. These kind of things happen. And children can get into deep depressions because of these kind of issues. Parents have to be there as rocks of support for them and ensure that children can come and confide anything they feel to their parents. And it's not a very easy task. It requires enormous amount of time spent with the child and ensuring that you handhold them through the whole thing. So instead of the child feeling, oh God, I have to do this, they should say, oh yes, I can do it. You know, that's the difference between pushing and motivating. So uh, I will also quickly share the five strategies which are there in the book. Uh, and these are very easy for any parent to implement. Number one is role modeling the right behavior. Parents should remember that children are always observing them. And children learn not what they are told, what is told to them, but what they observe. So parents have to be always modeling the right behavior. That's number one. Stories have a wonderful way of delivering messages to children. It can, they can deliver deep messages with the non-threatening fashion. Instead of parent giving yarn to the child, if they just tell a story which has got that moral, moral which you want to impart to the child or the value that you want to impart to the child without actually even stressing on the value. It will get absorbed automatically in the child. And what you're doing when you tell a story is you're imparting deep knowledge as a seed into the child, which later on will sprout at the appropriate time and the child will then benefit from it. So storytelling can help in enhancing even things like sense of humor, uh, their perspectives will widen and their understanding will go up substantially. Uh, storytelling can uh, help imbibe values such as respect, gratitude, compassion, uh, ownership, drive, uh, sense of purpose, resilience. Any of these, there are so many stories that we have right in our culture and, uh, and so many children's stories are there, not in, just in our culture, but in books, etc. Parents need to do some research come up with great stories which they can tell their children. They also need to understand how to do storytelling. That's a very big art, actually. 
Befriending, as I already mentioned how important it is for parents to befriend their child. Uh, but befriending doesn't mean you just give in to whatever the child wants. In fact, the more friendly you are with your child, the stronger the bond, the easier it is for you to actually set boundaries. And you do have to set boundaries for children because otherwise they can go wayward all over the place. So it is the boundaries which will help a child to ensure that they don't go uh, out of the, too much out of the way. Little bit here and there is okay and that is appreciated in children. Children have to push the boundaries a bit. But the boundaries have to be some aspects, on some aspects it has, been, it has to be concrete. It cannot move. And that is where friendship helps parents do the setting of boundaries. And last but not the least, do not indulge children by giving them lots of gifts or uh, you know, mobile phones and this and that toys and just spend time with them, active time with them is what I call it. Take them on vacations, tell them stories, play with them, uh, have experiences like for example, uh, as a kid I used to do farming along with my parents. We had cows and uh, uh, goats in, at home and I, I, we could take care of them and it was a wonderful experience. Uh, my father actually bought us a carpentry set and we would actually sit and make miniature furnitures together. So there are, there are these hands-on experiences which actually make you very good at problem solving later in life. I think I got into IIT because of these experiences. So spending time on experiences along with the child helps in bonding. It also helps in improving the problem solving abilities and IQ of your child. Do not give them gifts, give them experiences. They will remember it for life and it will also build strong bond with parents. So that's the you know, that's the end of uh, my, my own session and I would be very happy to take any questions at this juncture. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, yeah, of course, I do have questions to, you know, fulfill my curiosity. <laughs> I guess the, the first question would be, uh, many schools are reopening now, like after two years, how can parents apply the principles of active parenting in this situation? So I think it's essential for parents to spend quality time with children at this juncture. Uh, we are, children are going to go through enormous amount of stress at this point in time because two years they've been away. In two years, a child has grown substantially. Right? Unlike an adult, the child's entire life cycle has, I mean, in the life cycle, they have reached a different stage in two years. Uh, tweens have become teens. Uh, small kids have become tweens. So they have reached a different stage. They're suddenly going to be exposed to a bunch of other kids of the same age. They'll feel awkward. They'll feel embarrassed about certain things. Their bodies have changed. Their uh, perspectives, uh, uh, I mean, their friendships have become reoriented. Um, they have been also only used to seeing people with masks on or uh, through the uh, internet. And suddenly you are actually going to see them there. They will have body uh, image issues. So all kinds of I mean, people, have, there are a lot of kids who put on weight during this entire lockdown period, etc. They might feel uh, upset. Most of the kids have lost learning. There's a learning gap which has happened in this period. Because online learning is not the same as in-class learning. So their concepts are going to be poor now. They will struggle with that. And uh, in so so they are going to be grappling with so many issues. And and for younger kids, they are going to ha also have the problem of um, what do you call uh, uh, separation anxiety. So children are going to who are going to be who are always with their parents or suddenly are going to be away from parents for longish periods of time. They will feel really stressed out. So parents have to spend time with them, understand them, look for. Cues. Is a child suddenly become silent? Uh, are they looking dull? Are they not eating properly? Do they have a stomach ache? Do they have a headache? You know, those are the indications or they suddenly are feigning sickness so they don't want to go to school. These are the indications for the stress. And then what do parents have to do? Not, don't push them hard. Uh, spend time with them, talk with them, understand what they're going through. Uh, try and help them. 
try and get the help of a teacher who the children trust sometimes the children do not want to completely confide in their parents they would rather confide in somebody else who is a neutral independent party uh and but at the end of the day don't, don't be judgmental about it don't say you know i have gone through so much in my life you, this is nothing what is this you're being a wuss wuss you're being a you know you're being a, a wimp those kind of things are going to help children are far more sensitive than adults at this stage you need to handle them and help them so what to say uh you mentioned screen addiction like as a big big problem nowadays how can parents help their children get over this ah this is a very important one eh? and i think i mentioned couple of those points already the most important one is that first of all do not get your children addicted to the screen by giving them the phone as a substitute for your time uh and almost i think 70 80% of the parents do this that they give a phone or a tablet or a tv in front of their child to feed them even as you know toddlers now what you are doing is actually you are starting to reinforce a bad behavior in the child screen addiction has many many negative impacts number one is that it reduces concentration and focus so if a child is finally not doing well in classes and exams etc one of the aspects is screen addiction number two is it reduces social interaction and hence children become socially inferior the third one is emotional outbreaks can happen in children who are addicted to the screen they can go into extremes of emotion they can be angry they can throw tantrums they can scream at parents they can go bang the door when parents talk to them all this happens when there is more screen addiction posture becomes bad when there is screen addiction you know the kids the whole body posture becomes bad they will grow up to be adults who have who are looking hunched and uh, they do not have the ability to stand up straight obviously that's going to be an impediment physical fitness will be take a beating eyesight will take a beating so there are enough reasons why screen time is bad and what parents need to do number one is desist from giving the phone as i said or uh, a screen as a substitute number two is at least till the age of 5 do not expose them to screen at all if possible or much if possible i mean ensure that if you, even if you need to put them in front of the tv it's just half an hour or one hour a day uh, on weekends maybe couple of hours not more than that and that's where parents have to step up and they have to spend active time with the child and what is active time they can talk to them they can tell them stories so they need to give them something as interesting to the child as the screen and it's very difficult to compete with the screen because screen is designed to keep them engaged but between a mix of enforcing and giving something else which is more interesting you can actually wean the child away from screen so physical activity go for a jog with the child uh do some meditation with the child meditation is very important actually because meditation will help them focus and and have better concentration so um but parent has to role model it they have to do it along with the child otherwise the child will think why why am i doing this here why am i being punished for like this so show it as a cool thing to do uh, and uh, use sense of humor to you know talk about some of these things so that kids feel it's a cool thing to do and make them do it uh, play play some games with the child outdoor games also also inside the house itself make some imaginary games happen you know especially with younger children you can play all kinds of imaginary games like you have, have building a castle or you are going to the antarctic and then you are building a uh, igloo with the child all kinds of things you can do and parents have to be just little bit of creativity has to go in to make these things happen so these are the ways parents can actually uh, ensure that they wean the child away number number 2 is uh, the other thing that they can do is to also build a sense of purpose and the building a sense of purpose requires a lot of doing first of all you tell a lot of stories of people who have achieved greatness by hard work uh, without Because making it a moralistic gyan session, just tell the stories. Children will understand that 
having a sense of purpose, having drive, self being self-driven is very important. Also tell them stories of how parents achieved some major milestones in their lives by hard work. Children will understand the importance of hard work. And this is the way you can also ensure that they are focused on getting good grades or becoming uh, something in the uh, a great sports person, picking up talents, whatever is their strength in the school. So yeah, that is the way you can wean them away from screen time. Indeed, sir. I hope this helps a lot of parents now. And uh, the next question would be, uh, how is parenting different today compared to the previous generation? And what do parents need to keep in mind? Yeah, so I think the worst thing that many parents do is that they think that the parenting that they went through is applicable today also and the same kind of parenting will help their children become as successful as them. And then they do that and they fail spectacularly. The reason is that between 10 years back and now itself, the world has changed so much. There is so much more information available to children. The kind of uh, influences on them have gone up uh, exponentially. And because of that, there is a change in power equation between the child and the parent. Today, many children know so much more than their parents do on various subjects. They are more aware, they are more socially, uh, I mean, they understand many things. There are things which have come up which are very important for them in the last few years, which parents do not even connect with. For example, this entire inclusivity is something which parents were never born with and they never understood in the last six seven years it has become a very important aspect climate change you know all uh, making sure that uh, you do not litter the your uh, your surroundings all those things have become very important today and so children understand that parents do not so remember that there is a power equation change and parents have to actively learn from the child today if they can make that transition, understand from the child what's happening around the world, engage with that and discuss that uh, and without, um, you know, without feeling that they are being belittled by doing that. They need to do that and hence show their vulnerability a bit. Children will actually appreciate them for it rather than thinking that, oh my God, my mother or father doesn't know anything. That's not what they will think. They will actually appreciate you for asking and understanding. And then what you can do is you can temper their knowledge with your experience. And they don't have experience. They have knowledge. You have experience. You might have a little less knowledge in certain things. So engage with them and build their life together. Agreed, sir. It's a totally different feeling, uh, you know, teaching something new to your parent as well from the child's point of view. Absolutely. Uh, yes, sir. The next question is, what can we do to increase the concentration and focus of a child? So, there are a few physical activities that can help increase concentration and focus. First, but the basic thing is, as I said, reduce screen time. And uh, reducing screen time, as I said, can be driven by the child themselves. In fact, I know children who, before their board exams, voluntarily come and give their phones to their parents two weeks before and say that, please don't give it to me. I might get uh, distracted. Only half an hour a day, I will use it. I'll come and ask you. Now, that level, if you want to bring your child up to, that requires enormous amount of work. So that's one. Number two is, as I said, meditate together with the child. Meditation will help massively in increasing concentration and focus. Number two is, physical activity that will increase focus substantially so do chores along with the child or do things like you know painting a cycle together uh, or doing some pottery together doing farming together uh, creating a balcony farm or a terrace farm along with their child and give them responsibilities in that each of these activities will help increase concentration substantially. Okay, so 
Uh, the last question that just popped up in my mind is like in these last two years, children have become a lot of a lot anti-social and homebound by being in house twenty four seven. How do you think parents can help kids overcome this? Yeah, so I I think number one is going back to school itself will start opening up the gate, but the way to handle that is for parents to be. constantly in touch with the child understand ask every day what's happening in the uh, in the school glean some knowledge out of them in terms of if they are going through any stress or any difficulty speak to the teachers more often and understand if the child is having any difficulty in the school uh, and support the child then also take them on group vacations with maybe some of your friends and uh, uh, so their children and your children can have a good time Uh, and slowly wean them back, or it doesn't have to be a vacation. It can be a picnic. It can be an outing together. It can be going out for uh, dinner together as a group of families, and uh, children are in, in mingling with each other, etc. These are the ways parents can actually help in uh, making children more comfortable at this stage. Indeed, sir. Thank you so much. I am sure parents will get help through this session. Uh, if you permit. uh i'll move to the yeah <laughs> of course that's a book i hope all parents buy this book and i think it'll have and a the cover is buy. very interesting the cover of the book is very interesting thank you <laughs> yes sir uh if you permit i'll conclude the session yes thank you so much great thank being you here what's so up it Bye. was a pleasure being a part of this session it was good to hear your thoughts on the concerns regarding parenting and raising a child with all ethics and profound love our audience can get the copy of the book active parenting how to raise children with boundless potentials from the links provided in the description or visit a crossword store in the city thank you sir and thank you for all the audience for being online with us today Get ready for the quiz based on this session and visit www.oclfnagpur.com to participate in the quiz and win exciting gifts and prizes. A gigantic Orange Day Literature Festival will be back in November 2022 in Nagpur, the city of oranges. Get ready for the physical fest in the coming winter, attending awesome sessions and interacting with your favorite author. Keep following us for the festival of words. With this, I or Ida Nawab sign off from this session. Thank you so much sir for coming. Thank you.